So I want to tell you about your circadian clock, your daily body clock. So since the dawn of prehistory, man has been fascinated with the passage and the measurement of time. And one of the reasons this may be is that perhaps the idea was that we have an intrinsic or an inbuilt body timer. We may have this in several time scales, including a daily one. Now, up until about 50 years ago, the debate raged whether we actually had this inbuilt timekeeper or that we were just reacting to environmental cycles like the solar cycle, until a group of uh, clever Germans used a former World War II bunker in the Bavarian kind of index. And what they did is they converted this bunker into a living laboratory in which medical students could live for weeks on end in complete temporal isolation from the world around them. And was found when they did this, they still showed these 24-hour body rhythms. So they still showed that these had a circadian clock jogging these cycles. Now we've come to understand the nature of that clock in that there's a specific clock in a part of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This is our master clock. It talks to other clocks in our brain and in our peripheral organs such as our kidney, lungs, liver, heart. And these clocks jive these circadian rhythms in things, physiological things like blood pressure, metabolism, bowel movement, or psychological factors such as cognition, so ability to concentrate at different times of the day. So for example, well-known circadian rhythms, we had a paper published recently untangling the circadian mechanism involved in the incidence of heart attacks. You're much more likely to have a heart attack about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Doctors have known this for years. Through the circadian clock, we know why this is. Another paper published last week showed that the bladder becomes more capacious at night, driven by the circadian clock, stopping you having to wake up and disturb your sleep in the middle of the night to go pee pee. So <laughs> these are all physiological rhythms driven by your circadian clock. Now, normally your circadian clock is in trend or synchronized to environmental cycles of the world around us. And the key one of that is the solar cycle of light. Now, what happens when you break that link between inside and outside, we can see with jet lag. And we know all how rubbish we feel when we become jet lag. There are too many people that look like Julia Benosch when they're jet lag. <laughs> More people tend to look like making his second appearance today, our glorious leader, Ender Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but this malaise associated with jet lag is significant. It's not merely just being tired. And it's also significant when we think about that there's a significant portion of people out there who live in a chronic state of jet lag. And these are shift workers. Between 15 and 20% of our working population work some type of shift. And for these people, their circadian clocks are in constant state of flux. They're neither here nor there. They're never enchained to the world around them. And this leads to increased incidence of chronic diseases such as cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and shift workers. So if we see our shift worker here, we can categorize them here as sleepy, narky, and furry. <laughs> Another group of people whose circadian rhythms are significant as those that suffer from seasonal affective disorder or winter depression. These people, their circadian clocks don't seem to adjust to the shortening of the day at the onset of winter, and this leads to depressive symptoms. Uh, this is Bubba Watson. I put him up, not completely randomly, won the masters recently. He is an adult who suffers from attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. A group of people that we've done research on have shown that circadian rhythms in these people are abnormal and this may contribute to their symptoms. Nicolas Sarkozy, now ex president of France, is another famous and significant ADHD. -er. This leads to the idea then that we can manipulate circadian rhythms for a therapeutic benefit. So recently, this drug, agomelatin, was the first new antidepressant with a new mechanism of action licensed for many years. It targets the circadian system. But we don't need to just use difficult to develop and expensive drugs. We can use simple environmental manipulations, such as light therapy applied at different times of the day. We can also use other types of environmental and behavioral manipulations such as scheduling meal times, scheduling exercise, scheduling medical activity, scheduling sleep. And I think this is the really exciting part of this field, that can, we can use really quite simple manipulations to produce significant clinical benefit and increase the quality of life for people <coughs> who suffer from various psychiatric and other medical conditions. Thank you very much.